trails of troubles, rows of a We've got your number and we're coming all the way to London hey. to save you notice. Because you do not have our permission to sell our NHS off. You never did. Hey. And you know, everybody that has marched with us is part of the community. And for the first time in a very, very long time, we have the faith and we're going to fight and we're going to save our NHS. So thank you, Lester. I'm going to hand you over to the coordinator who's going to lead this rally. But on behalf of everybody that's marched today, well done, 15 miles, hard slog, well done. Hello, everyone. My name's David Cross. I'm yeah. a member of the Leicester campaign against NHS privatisation. It's my privilege to officially welcome the Darlow Mum and all the supporters of the march with them. Uh, this is just the first leg, this is just one leg of their epic journey. And I want to, I know we've already welcomed them, but let's officially show them our appreciation for all that they're doing to try and save our national health service. Let's have a big whoop! <laughs> and add weight to their commitment to the National Health Service. This march and the support that it has garnered demonstrates the resolve that exists to halt the catastrophic changes to the National Health Service and the chronic underfunding that is taking place. I would like to hand over to now to our first speaker, Rory Palmer, Deputy Mayor and Party Member. 
Friends, good afternoon. Let me, on behalf of the City Council and specifically on behalf of the Labour Group and the Labour Leadership of the City Council, let me give a really warm welcome to these incredibly inspiring people. All of you are an inspiration to anyone who cares about our health service who cares about what is happening to our National Health Service under this government. And let's remind ourselves what is happening to our health service, a health service that we cherish so much. The A&E crisis, a crisis in services in mental health, people struggling to get appointments with their GP and budgets under pressure. These changes which David Cameron and Nick Clegg and the rest of them have driven through without any mandate, without any legitimacy, without permission from anybody. It has to stop. And here in Leicester this afternoon, we say very clearly, enough is enough. We stand here with all of you on this symbolic march to say very clearly, we share your love for our NHS. We will fight to save our NHS. Leicester will play its part in that campaign. We will be with you in spirit on the rest of your march to London over the next few weeks. And let's say again, we believe in our NHS. We will fight to save our NHS. Not just a health service, a fundamental pillar of our society. There to provide treatment and care for people without discrimination, irrespective of economic financial or material means. That's what we're fighting to save. That's what we join all of you in fighting to save. Welcome to Leicester. We are delighted to see you here in front of our town hall this afternoon. We applaud what you're doing. You're an inspiration to all of us in this campaign to save our NHS. Let's send an unequivocal without question message to this government. These reforms are doing irreparable damage to our NHS. They have to stop. They have to stop now. Enough is enough. Our next speaker is Liz Kendall, Labour MP for Leicester West. Hello. I really want to welcome you all here today to Leicester. I'm very, very proud to welcome you to our city. In 1936, Labour's cooperative movement welcomed the original Jarrow marches to this city. And we helped provide them with new pairs of boots and shoes from our very well-known and renowned shoemaking and boot-making factories before they went on their way to London. Now we don't have uh, new boots and shoes for you today, but I want to say to you that we stand with you in that spirit of mutuality, solidarity, supporting you in your championing the NHS. And we will do that with you every step of the way as you go down to London. And I certainly, for one, hope to see you in London on the 6th, uh, as many other Labour MPs will when we see you in London. And we need people to support our NHS more than ever before. You may not have seen, but we've got a big letter of support in our local newspaper today, signed by all three of your, uh, uh, the Labour MPs here, the City Mayor, the councillors. We're very proud to have done that. And this will be happening in all the towns and cities you go down on your way to London. But the NHS is going backwards under this government. We have seen the worst A&E crisis for a decade. Hospital A&Es have missed the A&E target for every single week uh, over the last year. It's getting harder to see your GP. People are waiting longer for operations. We're seeing rationing of vital services uh, uh, um, so that people can't access vital operations that they need. Mental health services in crisis and care for the elderly too because it's not just what's happening to our NHS, it's the vital local council services. Thousands of fewer elderly, elderly people getting the care and support they desperately need. And why? I believe it's because of what this government has done with their awful health and social care act. And Labour has been very clear. The first act of a Labour government, if we're elected in 2015, is going to be to repeal the health and social care act, to put the right principles... 
But let me tell you, there is an opportunity before May 2015 to do this. On the 21st of November, the Labour MP, Clive Effort, has a private member's bill which will repeal the competition elements of that act. And we need every single one of you to get all of your MPs to support that private member's bill. The 21st of November, we've got a chance to put the right principles back at the heart of the NHS. We'll fight to do that. If we don't succeed, a Labour government will do it in our first Queen's speech. Nye Bevan said that the NHS will survive so long as there's folk left with the faith to fight for it. You've got the faith. You've got the fight. We support you in Leicester and we'll carry on supporting you all the way to London. Thank you. Our final speaker is Sally Ruan, who is a member of the Leicester campaign against NHS privatisation. All of you are here today. If you want to join in the campaign, we'd be very grateful to have as many members as we can get. and welcome here this afternoon. It's fantastic to see so many people here welcoming the marchers. And I would like to add my congratulations to these marchers and also to those behind the scenes who have been driving the support vans and sorting out logistics and sorting out the routes, etc. As Dave mentioned, I'm a member of the campaign against NHS privatisation in Leicester and we've been absolutely inundated with offers of support so that we can make the welcome to these marches a warm and heartfelt one. And we are very grateful for that. The march, this People's March for the NHS, seems to have triggered a lot of acts of kindness and hospitality and generosity. And in a modest way, those shows of altruism and the pulling together and the collective endeavour that all of this represents in some way reflects the moral values that lay behind the NHS in the first place. The NHS is a service in which everybody comes together, paying together and sharing together in the service and allocating resources according to people's need, not according to their greed or to their desire for profit. I think the challenge that we face and the challenge that a next government faces, a new government, is to convert this energy here and this determination and tenacity on the part of the marchers and all of the generosity that they hopefully are experiencing all the way down the route to convert that into policies which will make a difference, policies which will bite. And we want policies which are different, not just in detail or tone, but policies which are different in principle and substance. We want a different government which will lead us in a different direction, away from markets, away from privatisation, and away from underfunding. Funded, publicly provided and democratically accountable. And we need a government which recognises that Nye Bevan took the health service into the public domain for a reason. He believed that there was a fundamental clash, an incompatibility between private acquisitiveness and public service. And he believed that commercial principles are seen at their worst in the field of healthcare. All right. As other speakers have mentioned, the coalition government introduced, with no democratic legitimacy whatsoever, legislation which resulted in the 2012 Health and Social Care Act. This rolls out market competition across almost all aspects of healthcare and it repealed the legal duty of the Secretary of State to secure comprehensive healthcare for the people of England. That piece of legislation has gone further than any previous legislation 
to dismantling the NHS. And in fact, when the coalition first published their proposals, a leading light of the private sector said that they could well lead to the denationalisation of the health services in England. A new government must pass as its first act in government an NHS reinstatement bill. This is a bill currently being drafted by academics and legal experts and is designed to eviscerate the coalition's legislation. The passing of this bill, which will remove any requirement for market competition and will restore the legal duty of the Secretary of State to give us comprehensive health care, the passing of this bill into statute must be the first act and first priority of a new government. We have the seventh largest economy in the world. We are one of the wealthiest nations and societies ever to have inhabited the earth. It should be possible in this land of plenty for people to enjoy a health service in which patients are treated promptly and expertly, and in which staff are respected, valued, listened to, and paid well. And yet what we find is a service which is deliberately kept from adequate resource a deliberate policy of underfunding the NHS. We've been told by the government that NHS funding is protected and that it is not cutting the NHS budget. But this is slightly misleading. Experts agree that the NHS needs a 4% real terms increase in its budget each year to keep up with the growing and ageing population, this cost of new technology, and the fact that health service inflation is higher than general inflation. So we need a 4% real terms increase in funding in the NHS each year. Instead, the government has been giving the NHS a 0% real terms increase in funding. And that is one of the main reasons why the service is struggling today. So the NHS needs 4% in real terms each year. That amounts to about £6 billion pounds for, for example, next year. £6 billion. Pounds. It sounds a lot to you and me. But with an economy that is worth well over one and a half trillion pounds, I can assure you that six billion pounds can be easily found. And don't believe anybody who tells you that that money cannot be found. It can be found. We are not asking for the moon. We are not asking for the impossible. We are not asking for something which is unrealistic or unreasonable. We simply want to see that the next government will commit itself to an NHS increase in funding of 4% in real terms each year. And in fact, I think it is the least we could do for our own self-respect to ask for that degree of funding to preserve the NHS for our children and our parents and our neighbours and ourselves. Because it is up to us, we who are standing here in Leicester today, to insist on the preservation of the health service. The consequences of underfunding are being felt acutely in Leicester, Leicestershire and Rutland. We are facing a five-year plan called Better Care Together. It proposes a radical restructuring of health and social care so that as much care as possible is transferred out of hospitals and into community settings. 
Well, that sounds very good, doesn't it? Nobody wants to be in hospital if they don't need to be in hospital. And some good things could come out of this plan. But there are also major problems with it. It is essentially a finance-driven plan, not a quality-driven plan. Even with the best intentions, which I believe our local health leaders have, even with the best intentions, it is very difficult when you've been told you've got to save £400 million in the next five years to put quality first. Yeah. And we, the people of Leicester, Leicestershire and Rutland, are looking at the closure of 400 beds, a massive sell-off of NHS property, that's your property, my property and our property, and the likely shift to a workforce which overall has a lower skill mix. That is to say, more of our care will be given by less skilled and cheaper staff. This is not the time or the place to go into detail, but in my view there are major causes of concern and we local people must not allow the, le the leaders simply to implement this plan with no real public scrutiny or real public opposition where opposition is required. So finally, I just want to thank you again for coming here. I want to thank everybody who has contributed to making these marches welcome. And I want to thank the marchers themselves for their inspiration and their imagination and for their faithfulness to the National Health Service. Thank you. to introduce uh, one of our speakers from South Lewisham Hospital, certainly uh, the reason why we started campaign in to begin with, because South Lewisham Hospital uh, was under attack and the local community came together and managed to save their hospital and Barry's going to say a few words. Yeah, we're from myself, my partner, uh, Louise is here as well. We're from the Lewisham campaign. We're from the Lewisham campaign, uh, Save Lewisham Hospital. I'm just going to say a few things about the community uh, involvement in that because I think the inspirational thing about the march and the people coming on the march today, it's about people gaining some power over their, trying to gain some power over the NHS and services. What happened to us in Lewisham was we had a functioning, efficient hospital that was actually going to be closed or drastically cut down in order to bail out a failing hospital, as they called it, a neighbouring failing hospital. The reason it was failing in many ways was because of the PFI, the Private Finance Initiative. So they were going to take money from a hospital which was doing well and give it to one next door, which was failing. Um, it's the similar story that's happening all over. The thing about the Lewisham campaign that's really important, I think, was that we had a, a whole sections of community who were involved in it. We had patients, doctors, consultants, we had the local council, we had MPs, we had the pensioners forum, we had the mums and dads with the buggies, we had a buggy army which went up to confront Jeremy Hunt, he refused to come out and talk to them. We had, uh, we've had pensioners doing trolley walks around Lewisham High Street, we've had all kinds of things going on. We also had a legal challenge going because what they were doing was arguably unlawful. Um, we had legal opinion that said it was. We took Hunt and the Secretary of State to the High Court. We won. They were told they couldn't do what they were supposed to be doing, so what did they do? They appealed. They spent tens of thousands, again, of our money appealing a decision which was clearly unappealable, and it was thrown out by the High Court, Court of Appeal, within minutes of having heard the argument. Unbelievable waste of money. What they then did after that, thought, OK, we've lost the case legally. What we'll do, we'll try and change the law. So basically, they just tried to change the law with Clause 118119 and managed to get that through so they could actually legally get away with what they've been told they couldn't do in Lewisham. This is why we've got to be careful. This is why you've got to watch what's going on around you. And even if you win battles, they're only going to be temporary reprieves. Just finally to say, I mean, the march is inspirational. There's other things going on, as you're probably aware, all across the nation. We've got the Stafford Hospital um, sitting and campaign there. A marvellous job, again, an inspiration to us all. 
Lewisham, having been through some of these stages of problems with hospitals and NHS funding, we're out there trying to give support and help to other organisations and also getting support and ideas from them because we're also involved in um, a, many other issues across the board. I don't really want to say much more. Um, just support again from Lewisham to this marvellous march and the people of Leicester. Thank you for letting me speak and uh, thank you. Hey. Sheila now, who's written a song which she dedicates to the margin. And men. And men. Okay, I'm going to sing it through, it's very short, so I'll keep you long. You well, probably won't hear the guitar. Okay, other way around. Protect, protect our NHS from birth until you're gone. It's national, it's our health, a public service when we need it. It's not for selling, not for profit. We pay for this to be free for all. 999 NHS, praise the cause. Protect, protect our NHS from birth until you're gone. It's national, it's our health. A public service when we need it. It's not for selling, not for profit. We pay for this to be free for all. 999 NHS. Praise the court once more then. Protect, protect our NHS from birth until you're gone. It's national, it's our health. A public service when we need it. It's not for selling, not for profit. We pay for this to be free for all. 999 NHS. Praise the so I'm sorry for stealing the microphone. But there was something I wanted to say which was that it, I, I would really like to make clear that what we're about is about making ordinary people feel part of something, about making ordinary people have a voice and, and, and to empower people and to involve them. You don't need to walk 300 miles. We tell you, you can walk a mile. You can just come to the rally. You can sing us a lovely song. Thank you very much. And that's what we've seen. We've seen people coming out of their houses to let us use their loos. We've seen them bringing us sandwiches and cakes. But I also wanted to say that one of the other things that we are is we are not party political. We don't back any party because that would exclude people. And we, what we want is a conversation, an open conversation between all of the people who support the NHS. And that means we can't exclude anyone. We have to include all the people. There are people in this campaign that would vote for one party and I would vote for another. If we don't side together, if we don't stand together and have that conversation, we will lose. Because I tell you, the Tories, they'll do it. If we don't stop them, no one's going to. So I'm asking, my thing, I always say this, is I'm asking you to do the thing that you can, whatever that is, and to have the conversations with the people that you meet, to have the conversations with the people that you work with, to tell your children, and to confront and to lobby and to write letters and do what it is that you can because make no mistake this this is not about telling the conservatives anything they're not listening we're not going to change their minds what we need to do is change all the other politicians minds we need to change all of them all of it needs to change and the thing that needs to change is they need to listen to us 
So now I want you to do the talking. You will you do the talking from now on. Thank you. That ends the rally, everyone. You might be interested. It's four, uh, ten o'clock tomorrow at the cathedral. You can see. Trails of troubles, rows of battles, paths of victory. We shall walk. The road is dusty. The road is a mighty rough. Better road is a waiting. The day is not far off.